Hello there, my name is Agathis and I'm online and welcome to Homeworld Deserts of Karak. In the last few weeks Homeworld 3 was announced and so I thought it would be a good idea to do a playthrough of the whole Homeworld series. And it starts with this game, actually the last game that was ever produced, Homeworld Deserts of Karak. Originally known as Shipbreakers, uh, this tells the origin story of Homeworld. We're going to be loading into the tutorial so I can re-familiarize myself with the controls. And just look at this game. I love the graphics in this thing. In this tutorial, you'll learn the basics of how to play. Yeah. Objectives are displayed on the left. These are your gameplay goals. Select a unit by left clicking or dragging a selection box around the unit. Go for carry. Left click and hold to drag a selection box around several units. So the story starts on the home world, on, on, not on the home world, but on a homeworld. Strike craft ready. Move selected units by clicking the right mouse button on a position. On our way. We'll just get over this over and done with. And it is a desert planet, as you can see. And I love the scenery in this game. All of the rocks. Shift when issuing commands to cue them. All of the tiny sand dunes, the ripples on the sand, um, the larger dunes, the different shades of desert. There's not a lot you can do with desert as a graphic designer or as a texture artist. Next, but you learn how to control the game camera. These guys the to zoom have done really and well. Hold the and right just mouse button and move the mouse to rotate and pitch the camera. Strike responding. Try this now. Just look at what they've Press done. Backspace to reset the camera to its default orientation. There we go. Look at that little thing. Panning ah. the camera is just as easy. Look at the detail on that image. It is Press fantastic. On your keyboard. Or hold I'm going to take a screenshot of this and move the mouse. Pan the camera to the command carrier now. Take this off for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready. Carrier copies. Go. Information about selected units is displayed in the bottom left. Command buttons like attack and move are displayed in the bottom right. This is a command carrier. It produces units for combat and resourcing. The command carrier is your mobile headquarters. Durable, but lightly armed. Go for carrier. You can press the home or tilde key to select your carrier at any time. Move the carrier to the marked position. Position marked. If we really get down here, you can see the to blue the sky. Camera on selected units. Carrier copy. The camera will follow focused units while still allowing you to zoom and rotate. And the blue sky, a few clouds. Down here on the ground. Press the space bar to open the sensors manager. We'll do that in a second. Look at this ship. Look at this mothership. The command carrier. It has the same kind of blue um, lighting on the interior that you might be familiar with if you played Homeworld. Here it is. It's got little point defense turrets on the corners. You can see those, they look like the classic, um, they look like, um, if you're ever, if you're familiar with modern warships that have a, um, point defense systems on them, like uh, Phalanx or Goalkeeper, this is what they look like, that's exactly how they are. Um, yeah, 
They've got little lights, it's got headlights. Um, I can't remember if this is, I think is the bridge or something. Well that's the bridge in there. I think it's this. But so detailed. Confirmed. And these little guys, ah! This, these little trucks with balloon wheels, dual uh, rapid firing cyclic cannons of some sort. Um, another sensor package up top. Ah! What a great game. What, a, what beautiful aesthetics this game has. So, um, that's, a, that's enough of me gushing for now. Let's get this tutorial over with. Here we have the sensors manager. And move units within the sensors manager. Red icons represent enemy units. White icons represent your units. Your selected units are green. Got it. Orange and blue triangles represent resources. Blue domes represent the sensor range or vision of your units. Enemy units within contact range are marked with a red circle. As your units get closer, they'll be in sensor range of the enemy. At this point, you will see each enemy unit clearly. So you can see this is a proper 3D game. Um, it has been adapted, I believe, from the Homeworld 2 engine. And the sensor uh, ranges are in fact 3D. Now there's not a huge amount of terrain in the game. There is some, there are hills. Um, but there are aircraft as well. So, there are some effects that will occur depending on the elevation of your units. Uh, but, and, oh, it's so lovely and crisp. When issuing an attack move command, you'll see a red line drawn between the selected unit and the mouse cursor. When this line appears broken, the selected unit cannot fire on its target. This indicates that high terrain, or an obstacle, is blocking the unit's line of fire. You will therefore have to move units around the obstacle or onto high ground in order to achieve a clear line of fire. This is remarkably important, Select actually. Select your light attack vehicles and use them to destroy the enemy units. You can the, right the line of sight thing to is really or press worth a paying attention to. Left click to attack move. To command your units to attack a group of enemies, hold the control key and drag a box around the target enemy units. Okay, off you go, boys. Reading. So we're gonna go attack. Hostile. Strike cut. Take you. Let's focus in. Watch these little guys. There we go. Oh, we get some air. Let's right go over the hills here. He's gonna. He's on the fire. He's spinning around. Look at that. He's in the spinning around on the sand. He's on fire. The engine's on fire. Strike craft destroyed. There we go. Let's Strike go back home. Select the command carrier now. The command carrier has a unique power shunting system used to manage combat and production capability. Add all available power to the turret network system. The command carrier does have healing beams. You can see them kick in here. They're only very faint blue healing beams, but this vehicle is healing up right now. Strike craft ready. I think. Or is it that one? That one's being healed for some reason first. It'll switch onto this one. It's now got a blue glow on it. It's not fast, but it does count. Weapon systems online. We've got hostile on sensors. Confirm visual. Enemy forces are attacking the carrier. Destroy them. Carrier repair systems are unavailable. Weapon range systems currently nope. active. So where's its weapon systems? Let's get these guys out of the way. You can see the f the carrier do its thing. Fleet group one assigned. Look at those point defense systems and the missiles kicking in. The command carrier can hold its own in combat. Good. Selecting a unit and pressing the move or attack move command button displays the terrain overlay. While the terrain overlay is active. Some terrain is color shaded to display its relative height. 
The three colors of the terrain overlay represent high ground, low ground, and neutral ground. When a unit takes position on the high ground, it deals extra damage when attacking units on lower terrain. The enemy have deployed armored units. You'll have to find another way to defeat this enemy force. Railguns are most effective when firing from long range. However, they can be easily overwhelmed by short range strike craft like light attack vehicles. Proximity warning in effect. Hostiles designated. Tracking hostiles. Now, this game, unlike the other homeworld games that came before it, assign a control group by holding the control key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The number key. Fleet group two. Select the units in a control group by pressing the corresponding number key. So, this game, unlike the games that came before it, Use the boost um, has a lot less the units. Authentication. Select the light attack vehicles and left-click the boost ability button. Then issue a move command. And they operate on a very very simple As rock paper scissors type combat, system they'll earn veterancy veterancy improves combat ability to see veterancy select a vehicle and mouse over the ability button in the lower right corner of the command panel veteran units also have a veterancy badge visible on their health bar in the main game viewpoint Armor, go ahead repair it is and significant preserve this. veteran units when your forces are outnumbered veteran troops can turn the tide of battle yeah, uh, I mean, look at this one, for example. Extra 100 onto the vehicle hull and an extra 100% weapon damage at the end. That's huge. So, the first promotion doubles the unit's health. I mean, that's amazing. Go ahead. Uh, for this one, the first promotion doubles health, then it increases armor, then it triples health, well, doubles health again, then more armor, then range. Massive. And for the light vehicles, yeah, more vehicle hull, more armor, 150% weapon damage. Massive. massive. Hop ready. Now, it does work on a very simple rock, paper, scissors sort of deal. Um, so we have here railguns. Railguns are strong against armored targets. They have a low rate of fire and can't hit rapidly moving units. Hostile detected. Visual unconfirmed. These are our armored assaults. They are heavy armor. They've got 15 armor rail compared to the six armor of the railguns. Go for armor. Um, they have a high rate of fire. They're best against strike craft. And strike craft are these uh, light vehicles over here. You can see the strike craft are denoted by a triangle symbol, either here on the census grid or here uh, on the normal screen. Light attack vehicles are strong against ranged vehicles. So, to take out the light armored vehicles here, light attack vehicles, we'll use these things. Focus in on one of these guys. Okay, look at this. Heavy armor, huge rapid fire rotary cannon mounted on top. I'm just going to move these in a tiny bit. And you'll watch them sh absolutely shred the light attack vehicles, especially from slightly elevated positions. Four of these versus the light attack vehicles. What's the coming to range? There we go. Tracer rounds all over the shop. We can just use the attack command. Go, go, go. And they're taking almost zero damage because of their heavy armor. There we go. On the other hand, we have enemy armored assault vehicles. Get us underway. And they do have heavy armor, so we're going to use the rail guns. On our way. Move confirmed. 
if we can get them up to this high ground. They have a fairly long range. There we go, take them out. But these do not have a lot of armour. They're fairly light. Of course, this is the tutorial, so these guys aren't really fighting back. But one, two, three, four, five hits and it's down. There we go. So, the railguns and the uh, armoured assault vehicles have square-shaped symbols. These are sort of a square with an angle on. The enemy railguns, which look pretty much the same, are best taken out by light assault vehicles because they can't be hit moving so fast. We can use the boost ability. Go on. We're gonna oh, get some air. Oh, look at that! Didn't even get hit once. One down. Enemy railgun eliminated. Light attack vehicle is under fire. Two down. And the last one. Carry dead. Tracking hostiles. The enemy has deployed a mixed attack force. No single unit type will excel at destroying this target. However, aircraft can attack this force with impunity. Screen. Select the command carrier to launch aircraft. Okay. Reading. Launch aircraft by selecting the carrier and clicking the launch ability button. After left clicking the button, left click a target location to launch your aircraft. While deployed, aircraft can be selected and issued commands just like other vehicles. Once their ammunition is depleted, aircraft will automatically return with the command carrier. Oop, getting hit at long range. And the rail guns are pretty powerful too. Oh, we're losing them. Yeah, and this is why we don't use railguns on the front lines. But we do get aircraft. So we can select the carrier, get some aircraft in the air, and launch. Here they come. You have completed the tutorial. You're ready to explore the vast deserts of Cavern. Yes, please. And that is our tutorial. This is a very short video. Um, you can see that I have played the game a little bit. I've previously uh, done a whole campaign of Houghton World Deserts of Karak. It was actually one of the first video series I ever uploaded onto my channel. Unfortunately, the audio on it was really bad. And so I removed it to try to clean it up. Unfortunately, then I lost the original footage. So that uh, that video series is no longer on my channel, which I've, which is why I've been wanting to redo it for some time. And this is a great opportunity. You can see that I got a little bit way through the campaign on classic difficulty. Uh, that's hard difficulty. And I'm going to be having another go at it. So we're going to be playing. Homeworld Deserts of Karak, then we're going to be playing Homeworld Remastered. We might play um, Homeworld Cataclysm, or as it's now been renamed, Homeworld um, Resurgence. Uh, something about Blizzard getting all copyright claims on, game, on computer games with the word Cataclysm in them. Yeah. But then it will be time for Homeworld 2, and eventually, hopefully, Homeworld 3 when it finally comes out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am really looking forward to doing this campaign series. Please subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can see when new videos come up. And leave me a like if you enjoyed the video itself. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Agathis, and you will see me for more Deserts of Karak next time.